Hey guys, in this video, the lovely Tim is gonna be taking you through who Kaiser Wilhelm II was and what he did. If you want loads of questions on this to check that you've remembered everything, then they are all waiting for you over on my website. The German word Kaiser roughly translates into English as emperor and is related to the Russian word Tsar. Kaiser Wilhelm II was born in 1859 and died in 1941. He was born during the disunited Germany of city-states and died during World War II. He therefore lived to see a disunited Germany, a German empire, the Third Reich, the Weimar Republic and World War II. Kaiser Wilhelm succeeded his father to the German throne in 1888, being 29 at the time of taking the throne. It was considered young then, however many other monarchs in Europe at the time were of a similar or younger age. Kaiser Wilhelm's reign ended in 1918 at the end of World War I with his abdication and the abolition through overthrow of the German monarchy. He was therefore the last German monarch. There have been many assessments of the character of Kaiser Wilhelm II since his death. While historians naturally disagree, there are recurring themes. Kaiser Wilhelm is generally thought to have been intelligent, especially in matters of science and technology, and particularly in naval matters. He was a nationalist, a fervent believer in German superiority and of the special role of Germany in Europe. He was theatrical and arrogant, with a strong belief in his own ability, in military matters and government especially. Kaiser Wilhelm believed that he had a special insight into government and being the monarch should be allowed to rule according to his personal whims. In doing so, he dismissed many senior government officials that had been present through his father's government. He was hasty and reckless, but incapable of sustaining hard work, especially over long periods of time. Kaiser Wilhelm was unstable, suffering many mood swings, especially in short periods of time. Kaiser Wilhelm had relatives and roots in both Germany and in England, and he was torn between these two sides of his character. There have, since his death, been many written descriptions of Kaiser Wilhelm II. It's important to gain an insight from both sides of the debate. The first of these is an example of a negative description written by Langer in 1968. He believed in force and the survival of the fittest in domestic as well as foreign politics. William was not lacking in intelligence, but he did lack stability, disguising his deep inheritances by swagger and tough talk. He frequently fell into depressions and hysterics. It's notable that William is often an anglicised version of Wilhelm. A counter-argument is a positive description, or as positive as one can find for Wilhelm II, written by Nipperday in 1990. Gifted, with a quick understanding, sometimes brilliant, with a taste for the modern, technology, industry, science, desperate for applause and success. As Bismarck said early on in his life, he wanted every day to be his birthday. Romantic, sentimental and theatrical. Unsure and arrogant. These two descriptions of Kaiser Wilhelm II are very different. However, they are both written about the same person and illustrate that even many years after the death of an individual, opinion on them can be sharply divided. Kaiser Wilhelm II had several aims in government. He wanted a personal rule of Germany. Previous Kaisers had ruled through a chancellor and government. Kaiser Wilhelm wanted his rule to be personal to him. He wished to see Germany as a great power. The great powers at the time were Great Britain with a large overseas empire and Russia with a huge geographical area. Kaiser Wilhelm wished Germany to be seen at the top table with them and to rival them in strength and military prowess and economic and industrial prowess and expressed a desire for Anglo-German closeness which likely stemmed for his, from his roots and relatives in England. In doing so, Kaiser Wilhelm idealised the navy and wished for naval expansion and a general building up of the German navy. Oddly, he also expressed a fondness for and a wish to create a closer friendship with the Ottoman Empire, a large, sprawling empire, as one may expect from his character. Kaiser Wilhelm swayed wildly between blunders and successes. In 1900, he heard the marriage of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. Archduke Franz Ferdinand was the heir apparent of the Austrian Empire, and in doing so, Kaiser Wilhelm markedly improved relations with Austria, a neighbouring state to Germany with a shared heritage and language, and entrenched a personal friendship with the Archduke. This would later have ramifications at the start of World War I. In 1889, he created a trade agreement, which included the sale of rifles to the Ottoman Empire. This improved relations with the already declining Ottoman Empire in Southern Europe and the Balkans, 
and led to Ottoman help in World War I. However, in 1900, Kaiser Wilhelm gave a Hun speech around the Boxer Rebellion, an uprising in China. This speech was militaristic, chauvinist, highly racist, and was seen to encourage mass brutality and even war crimes against the Chinese population. This widely damaged Kaiser Wilhelm's standing and reputation abroad, especially in liberal democracies such as France, Britain and the United States. Another example is in 1908, when Kaiser Wilhelm gave an interview to the Daily Telegraph. It included a range of wild statements and unstable views. It widely damaged his standing in Britain. The Daily Telegraph then, as today, was a widely read newspaper, seen as being on the right or more conservative of British politics. This interview massively damaged his standing with that lucrative section of British society. Through much of the 19th century, European royalty was in intermingled in marriage. Kaiser Wilhelm II was no exception to this rule, and his relatives spanned Europe as monarchy. His grandmother was Queen Victoria of England. One of his cousins was Tsar Nicholas II, the ruler of Russia until the revolution in 1917. Another cousin was King George V of England. Kaiser Wilhelm also had a range of cousins in other monarchical positions in Europe, such as Queen Maud of Norway, Queen Mary of Romania, Victoria Eugenie of Spain, Empress Alexandra of Russia. His uncle, with whom he did not get on well, was Uncle Bertie, who would later become King Edward VII. In particular, Kaiser Wilhelm had unstable and often purely bad relations with his British relatives. Many have theorised that this contributed towards an anti-British atmosphere in Germany. In 1918, Kaiser Wilhelm II abdicated. He renounced and left the throne, and in doing so ended the German monarchy. He was the last and final monarch. He went into exile in the Netherlands. There was a tentative plan at the end of World War I to extradite Wilhelm for trial at the end of the war. This was opposed by many nations, who felt firstly that it was inappropriate to put a monarch on trial, as they were theoretically appointed by God and answerable only to God. Secondly, many European rulers did not want their subjects to get the idea that trying and executing royalty was an acceptable way to express their disapproval. Kaiser Wilhelm initially hoped that Nazism and the rise of it in, in Germany would stimulate interest in restoring the monarchy, potentially putting himself or one of his children on the German throne again. However, as it became plainer that this would not occur, Kaiser Wilhelm became increasingly distrustful of Hitler. However, he did send congratulatory messages towards the start of World War II, particularly when Hitler was able to take great swathes of Poland or Czechoslovakia. Kaiser Wilhelm died in 1941, his tomb today in the Netherlands is a focal point for German nationalism and a focal point for those who wish to see a restoration of the German monarchy.